we don't do very much truck stuff on this channel. But every time this thing shows up in one of our videos, we get a bunch of guys asking, tell us about your wrecker. So we dragged her out today. We're going to run Battle Rock out to the track tonight because like, we're running out of season. It's supposed to rain tonight, but I, we're going to try it anyway. Um, so let me give you a quick walk around of the Moto. That's what we call this thing. Huh? Moto, Mopar Moto. All right. So anyway, it's a 1980 uh, Dodge Retriever, which was a factory package. Now, unfortunately, I can't find any information on it other than just a, a, a quick mention of it in a brochure, but it doesn't list any of the real details or specifications. Dodge was really big into service vehicles back in the 1970s, 1980s. So they had like a service or emergency vehicle for every occasion, and the Retriever was the light duty wrecker. So uh, let's see. Let's start. Um, it's a, uh, this is 1980, it's the newest vehicle we own, actually, believe it or not. And we rescued it, I rescued it from a guy who was using it as, he was a scrapper. So he was hauling, you know, everything to the scrapyard with this. And it had been, if you think this is bad now, you had to see it when we first got it. You know, it was like 20 years of just scrapyard gack, neglect, and abuse. So it, it actually took a long time, a lot of effort just to get it to this point, And it's, it's still a roach. So, but anyway, uh, but it's, it's my roach. I love this thing. It's like my Swiss Army knife. When I had my parts business, this was like my helper. You know, this was like my right-hand man. I used to use it to pull motors and drag cars around, pull stuff in half. I used to use it to pull trees out of the ground. I mean, it's just the all-purpose vehicle. If you work by yourself, you need a wrecker, right? You don't realize how much you need an old wrecker until, you know, you actually get one. You say, well, how did I live without this thing? So, all right, so starting over here, it's a... Uh, Just a regular three suck. God, what a mess! I'll doll it up eventually. But it's a uh, it's a 360 Rochester carburetor. Absolutely nothing special under the hood at all. Um, backing it up is a, a Granny Gear four speed with a PTO for the winch. You know, it's, it's, it's got a real it's got an actual man winch, right? Um, it's a short wheelbase D350 chassis. Nothing special there. Dana 70 rear. Um, the bed is, it's a commercially available bed. I, off, off the top of my head, I can't remember what the manufacturer is, but there's only one or two. Um, but it's, well, you know what? It's rough. And up until now, because I used it in, it really very rarely left the place where I was, I was parting cars, I didn't want to make it very nice because, you know, always slinging motors and transmissions and chassis parts in there. So I didn't want to get it to the point where I was like, oh, you know, I don't want to scratch this. I don't want to mess it up. So it's, it's, it's Rust-Oleum rough, but we're going to upgrade as we go along. Um, let's see. Like I said, it's got the, the engine turned winch. The headache bar is, is, you know, attached to this thing, but the boom is held in place with two hitch pins. So if you want to use it to tow, like for instance, it's got a fifth wheel ball on it. Uh, and you know, and obviously we tow our trailer with it. You know, you could pull the boom off of it just in a minute. And there you go, the perfect tug. Um, let's see, they come around this side. The, the interior is, is contemporary roach. Very spacious, you know. Get a look at that shifter. I have no idea. That's the factory shifter, and that's all of the bends that were in it. I have no idea why they did that. So, yeah, that's the Moto. She's rough, but she's mine, and I love her. And uh, she's always paid up to this trailer. This one, ever I do everything on a budget. Even if I got the money, it kills me to spend it. I'm one of those people, if you gave me a lot of money, I wouldn't know what to do with it. Um, the trailer was a freebie. This was actually used as a, uh, as a bin. So it had these stanchions on it, and it was about yay tall, and they were using it for construction equipment. So uh, as well, if you want to cut the top of it off, you can have the, the, tra you know, the, the rest of it. So I said, all right, fine. So I did that, cut it off, and there she is. Um, and then I made this thing for it, which I almost killed myself making this. I was cutting and welding this together, and I had a, uh, a cutoff wheel explode, you know, a, a five-inch disc, and it uh, it sliced me all up. It cut my lip in half, cut my nose in half, almost killed me, but it works really good. So, 
you know, I'm probably going to deck it over the winter. It needs a deck. Somebody just put some sheet metal on it. It's rusty. It's got some holes in it. And I know the planking underneath it is starting to, like, you know, do this. So over the winter, I'll probably plank this thing. And uh, that's pretty much it for, you know, our tow rig. And then what we're towing, so we're going to take this thing to the track tonight. We haven't run it since we put the clutch in it. We haven't had time. So it's supposed to rain tonight. I hope it doesn't because we're running out of season at this point. It's the middle of September when the tracks close the end of November. So we need to uh, we need to get as many laps in on this thing as possible. I think the number to beat right now is an 886. All we're really looking to do is just get, at this point, is just get two or three consistent runs where we can start looking at time slips and getting a tune up on the car. So, but we'll talk about all of that tomorrow and depending on what she does tonight. And uh, that's pretty much it. My motel. See you tomorrow.